Ride Your Wave is an anime movie by Yuasa that came out last year, with a United States theatrical release this year, and an English dub this year. Out of all the animated films on my watch list, including Nine, Machia, Claws, and Spirited Away, Ride Your Wave was by far the movie I was the most looking forward to, so I was mildly disappointed when it didn't turn out as good as I thought it would be, though it's still an amazing film. Actually, it may be the advertising that ruined some parts of the film for me, given that the majority of the important events and surprises are given away in the trailers. That's why throughout this video, I am straight up refraining from mentioning that one initial event that puts the entire film together. So, how did this film ultimately turn out? And I think the most prominent thing to say in such few words is that this is by far one of my favorite romance stories of all time, combining a realistic, non-awkward, cutesy couple with Yuasa's usual anomalies and weirdness. Let me get straight to the point. Our two core characters meet and have realistic conversations. They go out and spend time together, they teach each other cool and new tricks, they provide emotional support, and throughout all this their bond is 100% genuine while also 100% cute. Conceptually, that doesn't sound like anything special, until you consider the number of other romance stories that approach this idea in the wrong way. I just think it's just that there are so many instances of angry sundares, panic overload, constant blushing, obliviousness, confession climaxes, and incredulously lewd humor, and that I find myself more invested in love stories that have our core main characters in an actual relationship. However, with Wider Wave, it can't really focus on that relationship stuff too much since there's more important matters the plot has to attend to. But it provides enough context to compare and contrast the future events with all being compiled into a date montage accompanied by a somewhat forced feel-good duet that kind of goes on for longer than expected. However, it has not one, but two dating montages. But why two dating montages, you say? Well, it all comes down to that one thing that was given away in the trailers, the conflict of this movie. It's an internal conflict, by the way. On first watch, the montages had polar opposite vibes. The first one was undeniably adorable and genuine, whereas the second one was just so cringy and awkward. At first, I wasn't sure how to feel about that unsettling aura, but upon rewatch and looking at other reviews, I realized that was the entire point. The point of the film, or more specifically these moments, is to communicate a theme about then versus now. The first dating montage was impossibly cute, but the second was just uncomfortable to watch, despite them being essentially the same exact thing. Our two main characters going out and spending time together. It's just that one heart-wrenching event that completely recontextualizes the images we're seeing. And sometimes you just have to accept that it's not exactly healthy or the right thing to do that same thing forever after a significant moment in your life. Sometimes it's better to just cherish that moment as a memory and just keep living. It's really hard to talk about the themes of this film without spoiling that one trailer rotten vent. And then we get to the not completely out of nowhere climax that nonetheless serves its purpose in the story, but it is somewhat jarring. But it includes many sweet heart tugging moments and a pretty intense scene that mimics another scene that happens way earlier in the film. And they don't pull off a fickle story trope involving romance. This really is a fantastic animated film, and I think it's one of the best animated movies of technically 2020. Okay, let's talk about the other stuff. This is essentially just a dump of stuff I want to mention real quick. While the animation isn't as polished as other films I've seen, the movements are really pretty. Also, any scene with a fire is just spectacular. The soundtrack is very good, and its highlights are pretty much the fire scenes and any scene with the theme in the background. I love that song. The English dub is surprisingly one of the best dubs I've experienced in a while. In fact, the performance is on a similar level as Silent Voice, the vocal performance, not the movie overall, no way. And that's it. For being the animated film I was the most looking forward to on my watch list, aside from Wolfwalkers, this was an excellent movie, delving into a philosophy on then versus now accompanied by cute adorable couple chemistry. I give this film a 9 out of 10. 
It is so watchable. Go see it, not the trailers. Tony Kawa, Over the Moon for You, because it's just so freaking good. Just be aware that it doesn't take until episode 5 for it to get really good. And by really good, I mean our married couple is a way better couple than Carl and Ellie from Up. Fight me. Wally, it's one of my favorite science fiction works and also one of my favorite love story works. It also happens to be my favorite Pixar film. Your Name is one of the most unique romance films of all time, being basically a Freaky Friday love story. And finally, Silent Voice. This isn't here because it's a romance film, which it technically is, but I disagree strongly. But it's just here because it's the best animated film of all time. Watch it again for the 15th time. And yeah, that's kind of the video. I think I, I didn't have an actual conclusion, so I think I'm just going to cut it off right here. <laughs>